Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and today we're going to take a look at Vagrant. Uh, Vagrant is basically a package manager for an entire development environment. So it's a package manager for virtual machines, basically. Um, the thing I really like about it is this line right here. Say goodbye to the works on my machine excuse, uh, as Vagrant creates identical development environments for everyone on your team. So the idea is basically that uh, I've developed a, a software application, I've got a GitHub project, something that I want to share with somebody, and it's important that they have the exact same environment as me, or they have a specific environment uh, to run that application or whatever it is in. Uh, so th that's what I really like about it. Now what I don't like about Vagrant is uh, it's a bit of a rabbit hole and it can be overwhelming. So what I wanted to do is a quick walkthrough on setting up Vagrant and uh, setting up a VM and keeping it nice and simple. Uh, we'll do some surface stuff and leave some of the more advanced things for uh, a follow-up maybe. Uh, so the first thing you do need to get is Vagrant. You can download that from their website. Uh, you can go ahead and get the latest version and they've always got uh, binaries for various operating systems. I've already got it installed on this machine, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. The other thing you need is VirtualBox. Uh, you can also use VMware. Uh, I'm going to use VirtualBox. It's free. And uh, uh, there you go. So this example is going to use VirtualBox. Then the last thing we're going to look at here is this website called Vagrant Boxes. Uh, dot, so it's vagrantbox.es. And it's just a list of boxes that are ready to go. Uh, most of them are virtual boxes. Some you will find a few VMware uh, uh, boxes here. And you'll also find some that have all sorts of things already installed on them. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this. We're going to use this uh, Ubuntu Precise 32 uh, as our base box that then we're going to run some commands against and install some software and so forth. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a directory and CD into that. And the way that you get started with Vagrant is just like a lot of other package managers uh, from the command line. It's Vagrant init. And what that's going to do is it's going to create what's called a Vagrant file. And we'll go ahead and open up our text editor here. So uh, this is the first thing that you see and this is probably part of why it seems very overwhelming. Uh, there's just a lot of options. Uh, rather than dive into every one of these aspects, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this thing and we're going to start from scratch and we're going to keep it nice and simple. So the way we get started is with vagrant configure. Okay, and uh, the argument we need to pass there is, and you know what, let me switch the syntax here to Ruby. Uh, this is a Ruby file or Ruby syntax, uh, but you don't need to know Ruby uh, very well. You don't need to be a, a Ruby professional. Um, so anyways, the first thing we're going to pass in there is, in our instance, the number two. Um, that is the Vagrant API version number. Uh, if you're on Vagrant uh, less than 1.1, you would use version one. If you're on uh, 1.1 up to two, then you would use version 2. So in our case, we're going to use version 2. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking that configuration uh, object and uh, I'm passing it into a loop, a while, something along those lines. Um, again, you don't really need to know Ruby to, to configure your Vagrant file. Um, but what I've done here is I've basically called that configuration object O. So that's going to be my uh, prefix for uh, building up this Vagrant file. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my box a name. I'm going to say precise, whoops, precise32. And you know, I'm going to make that lowercase. Okay, so now the important thing about naming our box is uh, we can use it as a reference later. So if we come back and we want to make a new Vagrant file, we can reference that. And if we've already got it on the system, uh, Vagrant knows not to go download it. Just use that base box uh, for a project. So the next one we're going to do is uh, vm.boxurl. And that is basically, if we don't have it, where do we go download it? So 
what was I looking at? Uh, this one right here. I'm going to copy this address. So copy that. And then we'll just plug that in right there. So uh, on this system, I've actually removed my Precise32 box. So it, when we run this, it actually will go ahead and download that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to I want to have a folder that I'm going to share with uh, uh, the the guest OS the the Ubuntu box that we're going to install here. So I'm going to do vm dot synced folder, okay, and then basically I'm going to tell it uh, I want to I want to have a folder here. We're going to call it app, and that's going to be in the directory with this vagrant file. And then on the guest OS, uh, I'm going to end up installing Apache. So I'm just going to use the Apache uh, default directory. And now I could make this folder, this app folder. Uh, but when I give this you know, to somebody to set up the environment, uh, I, I don't want them to have to have anything extra. I just want them to run the Vagrant file and be done with it. So what we're going to say here is create true. And that's going to create that app folder right here next to our Vagrant file on the host machine, so on our machine. Uh, we're gonna be working with a web server, so we wanna be able to get to that from our host machine uh, without having to be in the virtual box. So on that one, uh, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can do some port forwarding, things of that nature. Uh, one that I really like uh, is the, the network uh, function, I guess you call it. And so uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating a, whoops, uh, network. I'm creating a network, uh, or I'm getting it on my network, basically. And what I can do is I can basically, I can, I can give the VM its own IP address, a static IP address. So I'm just gonna go with kind of standard stuff here, and then uh, you know that'll do. So that's gonna be the the static IP address of the virtual machine. And then the last thing I'm gonna do. So, so there is a lot. There are uh, there's a lot to some of the more popular uh, uh, management systems tools for uh, Vagrant. Uh, Puppet and Chef would be the primary ones. Um, but if you're not up to learning Puppet or Chef right away, or if you just want to get started, what you can do is you can just write uh, a shell script and just say, you know, go and install all these things. So we're going to set that up as well. And what we do there is tap into, ah, sorry, provision. And uh, what provision takes is a provision identifier. So in this case, it's shell. Uh, if you're working with this a lot, you're gonna see a lot of different identifiers, but in our case, we, just, we wanna use this provision identifier called shell. And then it takes a, uh, a key, which uh, we assign a value. And in our case, we're just going to have this uh, shell script, so we'll call it setup.sh. So uh, we're going to go ahead and save that. And basically what the system is going to do right now is uh, it's going to create a box called Precise32. If we don't have that box, which we don't, it's going to go download that. Then it's going to create this app folder here. It's going to sync that to the var www directory on the uh, guest machine. It's going to network so that uh, network the two machines so that we can get to the uh, server through the IP address that we established here, and uh, and once it's all set, once uh, the VM starts running, it's going to run whatever we have in this setup.sh. So let's go ahead and make that now. So setup.sh, and all we're going to do there is uh, just run some standard kind of Ubuntu stuff. So let's do f git. Uh, that quite update that's going to update our entire system uh, the tack y if you're not familiar with that that just means if there's any prompts uh, just say yes to them all uh, so that we don't have to worry about that it's just automatically going to go through and then let's say we're going to install some things so f git tack y uh, install and let's say we're going to get the apache and say php 5 and then we need with Apache 2 uh, mod PHP 5. So that's, uh, we want Apache, we want PHP, and then we want the mod uh, PHP 5 for Apache. And then oops, once that's up and running, let's just, uh, let's we're gonna restart the Apache service. I, I don't know if that's actually required. I just figure if we're updating Apache, we might as well restart it. Okay, so this will do, there's lots more we could be doing in here. We could say, you know, install Git and go get a very specific project. 
and put that you know in the Apache directory or something like that. I mean that that's the general idea. We're just going to keep it nice and simple here. Um, so we've got these two files, and uh, so I could I could send these two files to somebody, and uh, you know they would have to install Vagrant and they would have to install VirtualBox, but then they can do what we're about to do, which is launch this puppy. And uh, the way we do that is Vagrant up. Uh, so once we run that. Um, this is going to start on what's going to be a pretty long process, so I'm probably going to speed up the video and then we'll come back after everything's run. But what you're going to see, you're going to see it, um, and I'll move this over here. You're going to see it uh, start up the machine. Actually, first it's going to download the machine, it's going to download the box, it's going to create the app directory over here, it's going to sync it uh, with Apache and then, uh, or with the, you know, the directory that we, we're, we're syncing to. It's going to install Apache and PHP and all that stuff. So we will end up seeing, you know, an app folder here. They're going to get completely synced, so we'll end up seeing the kind of welcome to Apache file in there. And uh, so here we go. Let's check it out. Okay, so our machine is up and running. Uh, as you see, it installed uh, everything. We've got Apache, we've got PHP 5, we've got the mod PHP 5 for Apache, uh, and uh, it did restart Apache for us. We can see um, here we've got this kind of welcome to Apache type uh, file. And if we want, we can go to this IP address and there's our file and uh, so one thing we can do just so you uh, have an idea here I'm gonna load up a, a git uh, console and let's see to get to I messed this up quite a bit so you know. uh, let me get uh, to my folder here alright and then cd into v is that what we're working in? v? yep v Okay, so uh, one thing we can do is we can SSH, SSH into our machine, and that we do that with Vagrant SSH. And once we're in there, just, just so you have an idea that, you know, we've got a fully provisioned uh, virtual machine here that we can get into. We can work in the machine if we want. Uh, the idea is that, you know, you can give somebody the environment and then they can work in their own machine. But uh, just for demonstration purposes, uh, we can see the file that's there. We can see this index.html. We could, uh, let's say we're going to create an index.php. Um, you can see that that showed up on our synced machine. Uh, so that's, you know, that's all fine and dandy. We can work in there. We could nano that and start editing and whatnot. Uh, but the idea behind this is that, you know, we can now we can work in our own machine and we can uh, uh, use our own tools, whatever we want to use and have everything running in the proper environment. So uh, let's do a little PHP here. And we'll just do PHP, what is it, info. Uh, and we'll delete uh, the index file. And uh, so now we've got this PHP file. And so let's reload this. There you go, we've got PHP running. Uh, we've got our environment. And again, what we could have done is uh, clone something from GitHub or uh, whatever the case may have been. Like if I'm telling somebody like, hey, I've got this great project, it's on GitHub, and then the guy says, hey, it's not working for me, I can turn around and say, here's an environment, you know, just here's a Vagrant file, here's a shell script, just get Vagrant and run Vagrant up, and it'll take care of all the rest for you. Uh, couple quick things. Uh, when we want to su shut this machine down, it's Vagrant Halt. Uh, there's a suspend, there's resume, things of that nature, but if we want to shut it down, it takes just a minute, you know, sometimes a couple minutes. Uh, if that takes too long, I'll, I'll skip past this. Uh, so there it is, attempting graceful shutdown of VM. And uh, the other thing is we can completely destroy this VM. There's a vagrant destroy, uh, and that would just get rid of it. Uh-oh, I got an error here. Let's see. Uh, try that one more time. 
object is not ready. So we'll try that one more time. And uh, so now I think it's down. I'm not sure. This the error that we're seeing here is uh, is local to my machine. Uh, I'm not entirely positive why it could be. It didn't want to shut down Apache or something like that. Uh, not typical. Uh, so let's see the status of that. It sh uh, hopefully it's going to say that it's shut down. All right, so it's powered off. So it actually worked. We did get this error, but uh, uh, you know what am I going to do? Start the two, the video all over. Uh, so there you go. That's Vagrant. Um, a real simple way to get started without having to know Puppet and Chef. I do think I'll follow up on this and we'll take a look at Chef. I really like it. It's a Ruby-based tool to, uh, it kind of takes place of the, the shell script that we ran. And uh, eh, so there you go. Uh, hope you guys liked it. Have a good one.